And one thing I remember about school holidays is it's a great time to annoy your parents um, or caregivers. So what we're going to look at doing is making some whistles, okay? And now this might lead into further down the line actually making instruments um, and things like that. It's all about taking ear and making sound, okay? So in the past I've done a few different ones. This is a whistle that has a slide in it. The slide goes back and forward, which changes the pitch of the sound, which goes through here and out here. Now, there is also whistle, a similar concept. This is also a slide whistle, um, the sl a rounded version, and the slide goes in and out the end there. And then a more classic whistle that you've probably already seen before is this ball whistle. Now, these can all 3D print and, um, and make a noise. But what we'll do is we'll start off by making a whistle like this. And as a bit of a challenge later on, I think we might look into you designing your own whistle and seeing what kind of sound you can get or moving on to an instrument or something like that. So you've created a Fusion 360 account and you're into the software. Um, this is what you see, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch and we're going to put that just on the base layer, the floor layer there. And we're going to build our, our whistle from around the center point. Now, if I, I always base my stuff off of information that people have always done. So if I look online, I've got heaps and heaps of diagrams of whistles and how they work. Now, what I can tell by looking at something like, this is an okay example, but the ear kind of goes in through here. And what it needs to get done is split on this edge here. You can see how the edge is on an angle. Ear through, split, some ear comes out, some ear goes in, and then out. And that's what's going to make your interesting noise. You'll notice that all of these whistles, whatever type, has a splitting point. And when you even get down to instruments, there'll be a splitting point up here as well. And all of these parts here help change your pitch. So where are we going? Back to basic. Something like that. Is that what I had before? Something like that. So we're going to use that. Oh, look, we've got some dimensions here as well. So let's focus on that. Let's make our circle first at 3.2 centimeters. So on here, I'm going to get my circle, and so we're going to be in millimeters though, so we're going to go 32 millimeters, and we've got the barrel of our whistle. Now the next part is obviously this straight part, so that's nice and easy. We're going to get the two-point rectangle up from here. I'm going to click once at the, uh, the top of our circle. We can tell the top if we go to our middle and then go up, and we're going to come out here. So, I can just stay there. Let's see if that looks all right. It goes above the circle and it's six centimeters long, so 60 millimeters long. So we'll just press D for dimensions, click on this line. It says 50. Let's just change it to 60 and we'll go with the dimensions. Probably a bit better than mine. Now I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. I'll press D on this edge actually and let's do, oops, sorry. D on that edge, and let's make that 13. Cool, so I've got a bit of a whistle shape. Everything looks all right. It's not quite that right at the end. I think it'll be fine though. Um, now, this hole, I've made some whistles in the past, and this hole is really important to get right. So what it needs to have is an opening of no bigger than 1.5 millimeters, I'd say. So I'm going to draw a, another two-point rectangle, and I'm going to start up here somewhere. And I'm going to bring my rectangle all the way into my whistle shape, and I'm going to make sure it's 1.5 millimeters. Okay, so there's going to be a slight gap that goes into here. And then I'm also going to get my center point circle again and kind of meet there. And what I'm drawing here is an inside empty chamber and an outside bit here. So let's press escape there. I'm going to cut away with my scissors up here. I'm going to cut away the bits that I no longer need. And you'll see it start to make a bit of sense here. And so we've got chamber. Yeah, that looks quite good. I'm going to on my 13, I'm going to make that a bit narrower. So let's make that, I'll double click on that and make that 8. Because 
I think it might just look a little bit better. Maybe 10. That looks a bit better to me. Um, cool, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to click. Finish sketch. I might actually round the edge off before I do that. So I'm going to click my fillet tool and I'm going to round this and that. So I've got a bit of a nice round edge. So my ear will go in there and it'll curl around there a little bit. We'll see how that gets on. We can always change something from there later. So when I finish sketch, I've got a 2D sketch on a plane there. Now I'm going to extrude. And I'm actually just going to extrude everything at this stage. And let's make our wall of our whistle one, yeah, let's just go one millimeter. It doesn't need to be very thick. And I've got, now I've got a 3D shape uh, of the side of my whistle. Now I'm actually going to go back into my sketches and click on my eyeball here to bring up my sketch again. And I'm going to extrude the side wall out. So I'm going to click extrude again and I'm going to click all the parts of my side wall. Now it's going to go red, but let's make that a new body, uh, a join, sorry, let's make that a join. And then as I extrude that up, I'm into my 3D space and that looks a lot better. 24 mil, my proportions look about right there. I might go up to like 25 mil maybe and we'll give that a go. So I'll click OK there and we've got a bit of a whistle with a bit of an open face. Um, what we need to do is close off this top part now. So closing off the top part, let's do another sketch, the top of our whistle. So click the top of the whistle and I'm just going to close off my edge here and I'm going to extrude up one millimeter so to close off the whistle. Now I've got a whistle shape here. Entrance hole, we know it's hollow in the middle and we've closed off the top. What we need now is the knife part essentially to cut our ear. So to do that, I'm going to draw my sketch on the top of my whistle here. And I'm going to go with a, yeah, let's go two point rectangle. Let's come up and start up here and go down to about this. I've got 20 millimeters by five millimeters and I'll click there. That's going to be my opening and we'll see how it goes. So finish that sketch. Now when I go extrude this time, I click on this and I go negative. So I drag it into my whistle and my extrude's gone in and cut a hole in it. And I've got the hole for my top. Now it looks like it may be a little bit small. So I'm going to go back to my sketch in my history. I'm going to double click my last sketch. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and we'll give that a go. Um, so we've got the hole on the top. It may make a sound, but it may not make a very good sound because we don't have a knife edge here cutting it. So let's put a chamfer. So you go ahead and modify chamfer, and we'll click on this edge here, and we'll chamfer that down. Uh, I want to get a real nice edge, so I can't. I might have to zoom in a little bit and get it right. So not quite. Let's go three. I can actually use put numbers in here. 3.6, see how that goes, maybe 3.65, and now I'm getting quite a nice sharp edge on that. So I click OK on my chamfer, getting a bit of a knife edge, ears coming through there, hitting that and leaving. In fact, it might be coming through, spinning around, and then splitting on its way out. Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, we'll see how it goes. Now, this is a classic style whistle, which actually has a ball in it, which makes that kind of... Um, interesting sound. So let's put our ball in at the bottom. Now this ball is going to get 3D printed in place, so we've got to be a bit careful how we do it. Um, I'm going to go create a sphere and I'm going to put it on one of the sides. So I'm going to click on the inside of my whistle which I can see. And now I've got this option here. I'll click on the bottom of it and what have we got? 4 mil. Let's make it 10. 10 mil sphere looks alright. Now it's gone red and it's going to cut a hole in there. I don't actually want it to do that, so I'm going to go change it up here to new body. And then the only other thing I'm going to do is, oops, 
for us. That works like a 10 again, sorry. The only other thing I'm going to do is get the arrow and I'm, okay, I lie. I'll keep it 10, I'll click OK. <laughs> now it's halfway through my um, whistle here, but I'm actually going to move it down. Uh, now see it's floating in the air here. I don't want it floating, I want it just touching the inside of my whistle. So what's that? Negative 4. On the side view, I'll be able to tell. Okay, that's made my wall one thing. So five mil, let's go like four, 4.9. It should be just touching the inside of my wall here. When that prints, uh, it'll be joined together and I'll just pop something through there and pop my ball off. Um, there we go though, we've got a whistle ready to print. If we go to bodies, I've got two things. I've got my whistle and I've got my ball. Um, just to make sure it prints fine, I'm actually going to join them, so I'm going to click combine that and that, and I'm going to make sure that's on join. Got to select them both, sorry, and then click OK. Now, if I did that right, which I didn't, I'm just going to untick that box. If I did that right, I should only have one body up here. Uh, now this is ready to print and test, and if we get it wrong, we might come back into history and just change a portion of it. But you should be good now.